The following video is rated B. Viewer discretion is advised. You might have read about it in the news. You may have seen it in a Google search. You may have viewed it on other YouTube channels. But today, on TV Box Top, I have the biggest, most anticipated TV Box release for 2020, the B-Link GS King X. The race is not for the swift but for those who endure it to the end. And the GS King X may have had a rocky start but it's finally here, updated and ready to go. So fasten your seatbelts because the B-Link GS King X full review is up next. So I'm back and this is the box of the GS King X and just the feel of the box alone tells you that there's something of quality inside. To the front of the box it says, save the beautiful moment with storage and this gives you an idea of what's the selling point of this box. To the back you have some specifications. It says that the CPU is the Amlogic S922X-H Quad-Core ARM Cortex-A73 and the Dual-Core ARM Cortex-A53 processor. For display, you have HDMI output up to 4K at 75 frames per second. It comes with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage. It has multi-language support. It has T2TR dual band 802.11 AC 2.4 plus 5 GHz Wi Fi and Gigabit Ethernet LAN up to 1000 megabits per second. Its dimension is 165 by 118 by 106 millimeters. Buttons and ports include 3 USB 3.0 ports, 1 SD card slot, 1 3.5 millimeters AV jack, 2 RCA output jacks. 1 USB 2.0 OTG port, 1 SPDIF optical audio port, 1 headphone jack, 2 balance 6.35mm output jacks, 2 SATA 3.0 ports that can accommodate 2 3.5 inches SATA hard drives, and it's powered by a 19 volts 3 amps DC power adapter. And without further ado, I'll unpack its contents. So this is what's inside the box. You get the GS King X TV box itself. You get a G10 wireless air mouse and dongle with voice command features. You get one HDMI cable. A 19 volts 3 amps DC power adapter. Brackets for mounting the internal SATA hard drives. An SD card with Core Elec operating system pre-installed. And the final items are your user's operation manual and a separate manual with instructions on how to install the SATA internal hard drives. Let's look at its design and ports. The body is made of metal with the B-Link logo and ventilation holes in the pattern of the letters GS to the top. To the rear of the box, you have one HDMI port, one USB 3.0 port, one USB 2.0 OTG port, one Ethernet LAN port, one SPDIF optical audio port, one audio video port, a headphone jack, a pair of RCA audio output ports, a pair of balanced 6.35mm audio output ports, a DC power input, and the removable back cover plate to access the dual internal SATA expansion ports. On the left side, you have vents for the SATA expansion bay and the exhaust fan for the internal cooling fan. On the opposite side, you have some more vents for the SATA expansion bay. To the front, you have two more USB 3.0 ports, a micro SD card slot, a power button and the B-Link skull with illuminated eyes that also acts as your power LED light. And below the box, you have three anti-skid rubber feet and a reset button. So it's finally time to set this up on my 4K TV and capture card and continue. But before I proceed, I'll install two hard drives into the SATA compartment, a 4TB and a 2TB. And this is a quick demonstration of how to install the brackets and how to insert them into the compartment.
so I'm all set. And this is what the first boot up process looks like. You have the B-Link logo and GS animation for a few seconds. Then you are presented with a quick setup wizard. Once you complete the wizard, you are taken to the launcher. So this is the launcher and it's B-Link's trademark launcher. They have been using this launcher for many years now and it's efficient but it would have been nice to see something new given the anticipation of this release. The launcher consists of these large main buttons that cannot be changed and a custom shortcuts bar here to the right. You have a date and time widget and a weather widget. You have a one-click cleanup button for killing apps running in the background and freeing up system resources. The launcher comes with a navigation bar and a status bar to the top with full system controls. And if you press the left or right direction pad on the remote or you click on this arrow at the corner here, it gives you additional pages to create custom shortcut pages. Features of this firmware include Under Droid settings, you have 4K display up to 2160p at 60Hz. You have HDR settings. You have screen position settings. You have HDMI CEC settings. You have audio output settings. And this area is important because it controls the various audio output options to the rear of the box. You have Dolby Atmos and DTS surround sound audio settings. And you have a root switch, but it's located in the developer options which you have to enable by continuously clicking on the bill number in the about device area. This firmware has a built-in screen rotation feature which I'll show to you later in the video. In the apps section, they have pre-installed these apps. Most notable is Miracast which I'll be testing during this video. And there's this app here called WeLine which is an app that does not come pre-installed but you have to install it from the Play Store. And this is the app that allows you to transfer data from your mobile device directly to the SATA drives or internal storage. And to test the performance of this box, I'll install some additional apps and continue. Some of you may have seen that this box cannot log into the Google Play Store. Beeling wishes to advise that they have since fixed that issue and for those of you who have already purchased the early release can now update to the latest firmware via the website or using the link in the description below this video. So I've already updated to the latest version and here you can see the Google Play Store working perfectly. It's the full Play Store and there are no restrictions whatsoever. So viewers, I've installed all my apps and let's look at its system and hardware information. It says here that the model is the GS King X and the main board is the Galilei. And that is for those who are interested in creating custom ROMs. It comes with 4GB of DDR4 RAM and 64GB of internal storage. The Bluetooth version is 4.1 according to the product description. The CPU is the 64-bit Amlogic S922X-H Hexacore CPU comprising of a dual-core Cortex-A53 clocked at 1.8GHz and a quad-core Cortex-A73 clocked at 1.7GHz for a total of 6 cores with a maximum CPU clock speed of 1.8GHz configured in 32-bit mode. It has support for 32-bit ABIs which means it can only run 32-bit applications and it would have been nice to see the inclusion of 64-bit ABIs also. The GPU is the Mali G52 MP6 graphics processor with a refresh rate of 60Hz and OpenGL ES version 3.2 support which is great for gaming. For Wi-Fi connectivity, it comes with dual band 2.4 and 5GHz Wi-Fi support. The version of Android is Android 9 Pi and it shows that the box is rooted. For thermals, it shows that the box runs between 32 and 40 degrees Celsius under normal room temperature and this is the lowest operating temperature ever recorded on a TV box. And this is due to the inclusion of an internal cooling fan and we will see how low it maintains during gaming. The box comes with an extra long list of decoders required for the playback of 4K videos with digital surround song formats and we will test this later in the video. 
and that's it for system and hardware information and I now show the results of the various benchmarks. First, I have the results of the RAM copy speed and the internal storage read and write speeds. The B-Link GS King X has a RAM copy speed of 5684 MB per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 130 MB per second and a write speed of 114. These scores are high scores, consistent with the scores of other high-end models. Next, I show the results of the Wi-Fi bands and the Ethernet LAN speed test. Most of you will be delighted to know that the GS King X has maximum bandwidth on both Wi-Fi bands and on the LAN port, and this also confirms that the LAN port is a gigabit LAN port. And now the results of the N22 benchmark, the benchmark that I use to place boxes on my chart. And in this benchmark, the B-Link GS King X got an Antutu score of 135,815. This is a high score and we'll see in a moment where it places on my rankings chart. Next is the results of the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark. In this benchmark, the GS King X scored 1,214 single core and 3,388 multi core. These scores are also high scores for this box. The final benchmark is the 3 Mark Gamers Bench Graphics Benchmark. In this benchmark, it showed that the box has Vulkan support, which means it can handle games with very high graphics details, and it also qualified to run the Slingshot Extreme test. So the results show that the box maxed out on the Ice Storm Extreme test because it was too powerful. It got a score of 1582 in the Slingshot test and 1148 in the Slingshot Extreme test. And these are some very good results because there are similar boxes running on the same hardware that does not have Vulcan support. And that's it for the benchmarks and let's now see where it places on the chart. So after entering the scores on my top TV boxes for 2020 rankings chart, the B-Link GS King X took position at number 3 in reference to N22 benchmark scores, making it one of the best TV boxes in the world you can buy. But benchmark scores alone doesn't say it all. This has to be backed up with smooth handling, unique features and the ability to play 4K videos with digital surround sound audio formats efficiently and it must also render high graphics Android games smoothly without overheating. And we will see all of this before the end of this video. And you can view this chart on my website in full spreadsheet format where you can interact with it and compare various scores. See the link in the description below this video. So this brings to an end this segment and I'll now move on to test its features. So first, I'll check if the root switch in the developer options work. Here it shows the box is rooted running on Android 9 operating system. And I will now navigate to the developer options and disable root access. The root switch does not activate instantly and the box automatically restarts when you turn it on or off. So here it now shows that the box is not rooted so the root switch works perfectly. Next I show its digital rights management information or DRM info for short. And it shows that the GS King X has Google Widevine level 1 with no HDCP protection. And despite having wide vine level 1, this box can only play Netflix and Amazon Prime Video along with other premium streaming services where available in basic or standard quality. It needs some level of HDCP protection and as for Netflix, it needs official ESN certification for it to play in HD or 4K quality. But this limitation only applies to paid premium streaming services and it does not affect free alternative methods such as Kodi and streaming APKs. Next, you may be wondering what's this purple color about? Well viewers, I'm happy to inform you that B-Link has stepped up their customization features and implemented a little surprise for us in this new model. They have added the ability to change the wallpaper of their default launcher, a feature not seen in previous models. It works literally with any wallpaper you install, even live wallpapers.
Next, I will test an alternative launcher. I installed the ADW Launcher 2 and it works with all the drag and drop features working. This theme is more geared towards the use of an A mouse or a mini touchpad keyboard with a mouse pointer and there is one that comes in this purchase, the G10 model. In case you didn't know, the ADW Launcher 2 features the ability to change the theme by installing one of the many compatible themes on the Play Store, changing its appearance, its icons and wallpaper. B-Link has also implemented another surprise in this model, which is screen rotation. But same as the root switch, it's not located in the main settings area. You have to navigate to the more settings area under display to find it. So thumbs up to B-Link for adding this feature also. The GS King X comes pre-installed with the official version of Miracast, so here I am casting my cell phone with Miracast set to HD quality. I now move on to its streaming features. As indicated earlier, the GS King X does not have the required DRM support to play Netflix and Amazon Prime Video in HD and 4K quality. However, this doesn't mean that they cannot work. You won't find a Netflix to install on the Google Play Store, you will have to sideload it using an APK download or via an APK App Store such as Aptoid or APK Pure. Amazon Prime installs directly from the Play Store and both Netflix and Amazon Prime Video plays in standard quality, which is very watchable but by no means the highest you can get on a premium account. Well, it's now possible with Core Elec. Core Elec is a Kodi project that allows you to run Kodi as a bootable operating system via SD card and it utilizes 100% of the box's hardware. Included in your purchase, B-Link has provided a custom copy of Core Elec tailored to work specifically on this hardware and they have also made it very easy to run on this box. Simply insert the SD card into the SD card slot, press and hold the power button and the power definition options will pop up and you simply click switch systems. The GS King X will reboot and load straight into Core Elec. The other way is to simply insert the SD card and restart the box and it will boot directly into Core Elec. Just a quick note, due to the firmware update, the Core Elec SD card provided in your purchase will not work once you update the firmware. However, B-Link has provided a fix for Core Elec that you simply copy and paste overriding the DTB image file on the card and it will work on the updated firmware. See the link below this video. So I will leave Core Elec for now and return to it during the 4K playback and the gaming segment. Same video, no HDR icon appears. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section. So moving on to the selling point of this box which is its ability to act as an Android Samba server where you can store media on the SATA hard drives and access them on your mobile devices, desktop computers or laptops. The GS King X can add up to 32TB via its two SATA ports. And for this demonstration, I've installed 4TB on the bottom rack and 2TB on the top rack. 
And a common question is about a box's ability to convert a large hard drives in excess of 2 terabytes to share into no storage. And even though this box can take up to 32 terabytes, it can only convert up to 2 terabytes max. So I've already converted the 2 terabytes to shared internal storage and formatted the 4 terabytes as portable storage. For the sake of time, I won't go into details on how to configure this box as a Samba server, but only briefly to say that not all Samba server apps on the Play Store works on this box. The one that I found to work the best was the WebDAP app. And the browser on your mobile device that I found most compatible is the Solid Explorer. There is the WeLine app provided by Beeling that is supposed to take care of this feature, but there are two issues that I found with it. One being that a large part of the app is written in Chinese, and the other part is that you have to pay for tokens to operate the app. I know this is going to be a turn off for most users, so I decided to use this easier and free method. So on the box, you simply install the WebDAV app from the Google Play Store. In the settings area, select the type of network you'll be using and this is a very important setting. Set the home directory as one of the formatted hard drives. Set a username and password if you so desire. And finally, click the start button and the box will now be in Samba Silver mode and ready to interact with your devices. This entire IP address is what you will be entering into your mobile device or PC along with the username and password if you created one. On your mobile device, install Solid Explorer. Open the app and click the plus button. Click on the cloud icon. Scroll down and select WebDAV and click Next. Select HTTP. Enter the entire IP address from the WebDAV page and enter as a remote host name. Click Next and Solid Explorer will add your Samba server as one of the storage devices for you to browse. With this, you can drag and drop files from your mobile device to the server and vice versa. You can also play videos and music directly from the server, but I advise that your network must be fast enough and the mobile device you intend to play videos and audio on from the server is also fast and capable enough to handle the stream. So I will now do a quick demonstration and play some 4K videos that I uploaded to the server. So that's it in a nutshell. There are many ways you can set up and configure the server, but this was the easiest way for me and best suited for a brief demonstration. The server is fast and the 4K video streamed over my network without freezing. However, when I used a cheaper phone such as my Samsung J7 Prime with lower end hardware, it had lots of buffering. I will now play my list of 4K video samples in HDR format from the 4TB hard drive and here you can see the image that I transferred from my cell phone over the server.
only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico, but the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case of a tie on points. The mosaic of the Camp Nou. So before I move on to testing its digital audio features, there is another issue I wish to bring to your attention and it also questions the theory about digital audio formats. B-Link wishes to advise that in their latest firmware update, they developed a bug that blocks Dolby and DTS audio from passing through the HDMI port and the AV ports do not activate when you switch over to them in the audio settings. They are aware of these issues and would like to assure you a fix will be forthcoming in the next firmware update. And this is highly suspicious and I don't believe they went through the trouble to create a TV box of this caliber and mess up on a selling point feature like this. And I would like you to stick a pin on it for a moment and I will return to it shortly and show you something truly unexpected. So in my continued testing, desperately looking for Dolby and DTS audio, I discovered something interesting and it raises questions about the facts surrounding the ability of the optical audio port to output the Dolby and DTS audio formats. Seeing that I cannot get these formats from the HDMI port at this time, I was able to get them off of the optical audio port and this is not the unexpected thing I was referring to, I'll get to that in a second. Soundscape sits the moon to the sea. Or captures the full extent of nature's fury.
So this raises the question, is this true Dolby Atmos and DTS audio I'm getting off of the optical audio port? And was the advice given to me by audio experts incorrect? Because if there's an issue with the output from the HDMI port, how is it that I'm getting Dolby and DTS audio off of the optical audio port? So I'll leave this open for discussion and feel free to weigh in on the facts in the comments below. And on the optical audio port, I still did not get Dolby True HD. So back to the topic of no Dolby and a DTS audio on the HDMI port and my suspicion about this mishap and it's something I believe was somewhat deliberate in my opinion. Remember I said I would return to Core Elect earlier in the video? Well, I almost didn't because I was frustrated that I didn't get a Dolby and DTS audio and I felt it was time to wrap it up. But remember the quote at the beginning, the race is not for the swift but for those who endure it to the end? During the segment to feature some of the things you can do on Core Elect such as retro gaming and Kodi movie add-ons, I stumbled across my biggest discovery yet for 2020 and that is, the B-Link GS King X can indeed output Dolby Atmos and DTS audio and not only those, it can also output Dolby True HD. How do I know this? Well, see for yourself. Right now I'm in Core Elect and I've loaded my Dolby and DTS videos onto my flash drive like I usually would and the box is connected to the receiver in HDMI pass-through mode. Pay close attention as I play these videos again and this time I have also included some more Dolby True HD videos and I will indicate when I play them. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio with powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Whether the soundscape sits the mood of the scene, This is the left channel. the right channel. This is the right surround channel.
This is truly an outstanding achievement by B-Link because aside from Netflix in HD and 4K quality, the next most demanded feature on TV boxes is Dolby True HD audio output which the Nvidia Shield has held for the past 4-5 to five years. And I'm also of the belief that B-Link knew I would discover this feature because they know that I'm the only TV box reviewer that performs a test for these formats. And some of you may be asking, how is it my receiver did not show Dolby True HD on the display? And this is because the firmware of my receiver displays Dolby True HD as Dolby Surround. And to prove it, I will now connect the Nvidia Shield Pro to the receiver and play one of the True HD videos and see the same results. So those were two of my official Dolby True HD videos and the Nvidia Shield displays the same results on my receiver. This was just to proof test my claims about the GS King X. For those concerned about Bluetooth connectivity, here I am pairing my Bluetooth gamepad and I will now use it to play some games. We have entered into a new era of TV box gaming with the recent move by Nvidia to open up their GeForce gaming platform to all Android devices. This bold move by Nvidia spelled good news for users of Android cell phones and tablets, but it means even greater news for Android TV box users because it has now converted Android TV boxes to full-fledged gaming consoles. With access to the GeForce Now platform, it now means that your TV box has access to the Steam platform and the Epic Games platform. What's even greater is that your gamepad and your keyboard and mouse are now fully compatible with every game on these platforms and it requires no key mapping whatsoever. More than that, you can now enjoy console-like gaming in very high graphics detail on your TV box without your TV box having to bear the load of processing these games because the games are processed on the GeForce platform and streamed directly to your box. This is going to change the way we look at TV box gaming and it will also save you from paying high exorbitant prices for gaming consoles. So I've already installed the GeForce Now app on this box and now feast your eyes on the magnificence of the Nvidia GeForce gaming platform. Stay focused. If your tracker blinks, there's trouble nearby.
the Nvidia GeForce Now app is now free on the Google Play Store and this now increases the gaming capabilities of TV boxes to epic proportions. In summary, B-Link has really outdone themselves in this release. They set out to deliver a TV box whose selling point was supposed to be storage and acting as a Samba server but directly or indirectly delivered a TV box that's so much more. The long list of pros include Hexacore CPU, internal cooling fan, two SATA expansion ports, four USB 3.0 ports and additional audio ports, B-Link launcher with the ability to use live wallpapers, navigation bar and status bar, alternative launchers, root switch in the developer's option, built-in screen rotation in the more settings area, Dolby Vision and HDR display, high benchmarks taking position number 3 on my chart, the coolest operating temperature in the industry, zero overheating not even during gaming, Samba server capabilities up to 32 terabytes, Core Alec dual boot to a second operating system, excellent 4K video playback, Kodi and streaming APKs work perfectly, YouTube plays in HDR quality, only TV box to do this, Dolby Atmos DTS audio on the optical SPDIF port. Dolby True HD on Core Elect, Emulation Gaming on Core Elect, Excellent Handling of Nvidia GeForce Now Platform and the Inclusion of a G10 Wireless Air Mouse with Voice Command Features. As for the cons, it needs a firmware update to fix the digital audio issue on the HDMI port on the Android and the box does not have the digital rights to play Netflix in HD and 4K quality. So viewers, I have come to the end of my review. Thanks for taking the time to watch this very long video and I don't expect you to watch the entire video at once so I've provided timestamps in the description below this video where you can skip to the sections of the video that interest you the most. All sellers of this TV box have been contacted and asked to provide coupons so that anyone wishing to buy this box can get it at a reduced price for a limited time. So the various sellers and coupons will be placed in the description below this video. Thanks again for watching. Your subscription, likes, comments and support are greatly appreciated and I will try my best to receive additional copies of this box for giveaways. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one.